Good evening and welcome to the Velocity of Now with me, your host, Thomas Sheridan. My website is www.thomasheridanarts.com and the programs are archived, the video versions of the programs are archived at newsymbolsmedia.tv and also on my YouTube channel, Thomas Sheridan Arts. It's the 29th of April, 2015. Ooh, and the show ends. It's Valpurgis Night after my book which you can get my excellent book Valpurgis Night which everybody tells me is a super read at thomasheridanarts.com there's a little tab up in the corner that says bookshop and if you'd like to get that book and read it and my books they're there for you to read yes uh, Valpurgis Night the witch's sabbath well really the witch's sabbath in the Christian sense and speaking of a witch's sabbath we're going to be talking about democracy tonight uh, black witch's sabbath really that's where election day is my, I just saw like there. I was just looking there. My friend uh, Stephen is an Irish guy. He's a Facebook friend that lives over there in England. He's going to see Derek Acora, the 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 clairvoyant, the whatever the cold reader, whatever the guy is, calls himself from the from UK TV tomorrow night on Valpurgis night as well. I wish I was going to that. I find it hard to dislike Derek Acora. I know it's 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 all bollocks, really, uh, for the most part. Maybe some of it isn't, but. I just find him hard to dislike. I don't know whether, it, whether it's his thick Liverpoolian accent or the fact that he reminds me of a time when when we had entertainers on TV and not presenters. So he's very hard for me to dislike, even though he's probably making it up through his through his backside. Uh, I just find I, I mean Valpurgis night and uh, and the night that Hitler vanished and and Derek Akora that would be a legend to get him to try and contact Hitler. All right, Dolph, are you there? Come on back, come on back, Adolf. Yeah, that would be, that'd be a bit of a laugh. Calm down now, Stalin, calm down, calm down. You'll have us all in the bleed, Nazi. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, tonight uh, is is the, the cusp of Valpurgis, a very interesting historical date. There's a, there's a, there's a, on my... Well, let's see on new symbols TV, media TV, but on my blog, I have a list of all the weird things that happen on Valpurgis on the Witch's Sabbath, and it is no coincidence, including Derek Akora. I should add him to that. I just got back from Manchester, where I spoke at the National Health Federation's uh, 60th anniversary bash in uh, the Quaker Rooms in central Manchester. It was a lovely event. I met some really nice people. Sadly, it wasn't recorded, but I had a good time there. There are a great bunch of people uh, that run that event, and we should all support them and what they do because they really are the last buffer, the last really well-organized buffer that can actually do things between pharmaceutical companies and a kind of a transhumanist, you know, non-organic future, non-holistic self-healing future, mainly because Scott Tips is on the Codex Committee and he's able to get in there and at least try to disrupt some of the some of the efforts to you know keep us all on chemicals and nothing else and uh, to kill you know the what to wipe vitamins out and all that kind of thing so uh it was that was nice if you want to at that also don't forget the alternative view conference i got chastised by ian today for not well i get chastised but he asked me to remind people it's the the alternative view six it's at the Stabaton Hope Park Hotel, a very, very nice hotel. I was big on that last year. Uh, in in Daventry in North Hans, North Hans, which is sort of like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's near kind of Milton Keynes, that kind of part of England. Very beautiful countryside and a very nice hotel and a, a great lineup of speakers, including your tr yours truly. And also on the Monday, I'll be giving a tarot, Monday morning before I go back to Ireland, I'll be giving a tarot course. So you can want you can come to that as well if you like, uh, like a tarot workshop, which I haven't done in a while. So it's all well worth coming, and you get to say you had breakfast with me. Just think of that you you had breakfast with me, where you can listen to my witty rack on you know my witty banter in the morning, and then you can have lunch with me, and then you can have dinner with me if you want. And so uh, you get to hang out with me. I get to hang out with you. Stay in a lovely hotel that has all the facilities you need there. Plus, listen to interesting speakers and uh, have a very nice time. What more would you want? So if you go to alternativeview.co.uk, you can register there. Now, some people say it's expensive. It's not. Let me tell you, it's not expensive. 
for starters, it's worth just for the hotel price alone and the food. If you were to go to a and b in Ireland, anywhere, you'd spend the same amount for a weekend away just in a hotel without the food. And here you're getting the food, the food, the hotel, all the meals and all the talks. And you get to have breakfast with me. You can see my bloodshot eyes hanging over two two sausages after I've had a hangover. No, I'm just joking. I'm, I don't I do not do those kinds of things. So while I was in Manchester as well on the weekend, I, I, I did some work. Well, I'm always working. I, 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 just, I hate the idea of not being productive and not doing something. I even work in my sleep. I get ideas for paintings and you know horror stories if I have bad nightmares. But while I was in Manchester, on a serious note, I've been very interested in what I believe is a serial killer there. There's a serial killer, I believe, stalking the canals of canal, the canals of the city, uh, the vast complex of canals, and killing people and throwing them in. Now, you're supposed to be just, the cops just say someone they're falling in and drowning. The, the canals are incredibly shallow. They're only a couple of feet deep. Canal barges are really shallow. And you'd have to, even if you fell in the winter, you couldn't die of hypothermia realistically because all you have to do is scream and shout and someone will hear you. We're talking about the center of a big city. Someone will come to your rescue. So there's something very sinister going on in Manchester. It seems to be mostly gay men or guys who are perceived to be gay who are being targeted by the killer. So serial killers are back. Back. Uh, they're not. They're not hyping them up as much as they used to. But the reason why the police don't want to hype up the serial killer in Manchester is because they're very difficult to cut, catch. And police. A worst. The worst nightmare for a police department is a serial killer in the jurisdiction. Not because. Uh, not. Not. Not because of the, the the serial killer killing people. Because they're so difficult to catch, and the serial killer will play a cat and mouse game with the police. But also, as the body mount rise, the body count rises. The serial killer will become a kind of a mystique character in the community, like Jack the Ripper or you know the Night Stalker, or Son of Sam. At the same time, the police look incredibly incompetent as the body count rises, and the media generally savaged him. But I've made a film about him. I went to visit some of the spots uh, where the bodies have been found, and one of them was nearly a big mistake because I was followed by this guy wearing a hoodie, and it was kind of I'm sure he wasn't trying to attack me, but it scared the bisto out of me. And that's actually on the video. If you go to my YouTube channel, Thomas Sheridan Arts, you'll see a, a short film I made called Blind Spot, a serial killer in Manchester. And uh, it's some footage I took on the weekend, very early in the morning or late at night in and around the gay district. And uh, it, I think the police in Manchester really need to get serious about this. But more importantly, too, people themselves in Manchester, they they need to... You know, practice a lot more personal, unlike me. But I wasn't late at night. I really wasn't expecting anyone to appear at that, you know, at, at, at six o'clock in the morning, but uh, under a canal bridge. But there you go. Uh, they should really practice, you know, safety and not go home alone by the canal towpaths at night. And certainly not if they pick up some, a guy picks them up in a gay bar. Don't go home. It could be even a woman. Who knows? But it's, it's, I think the profile would suggest to me it's a male, a male with a, uh, so, sexual self-loading I would suggest that they they don't go home walk home with them because the drinks may well be spiked in my file week and then then it will happen so uh, please be careful if you live in Manchester if you, and please take care walking along the canals at night so check out Thomas Sheridan Arts dot, no sorry Thomas Sheridan Arts on YouTube and see that film I made called Blind Spot a serial killer in Manchester I want to make more short films like that that have that kind of you know investigative journalism punch to them that are that are, get the point home there's also another video i've uploaded this week which is another one that was scared of a jesus out of you but for different reasons darpa in america have developed wait for it a drone bullet yes a bullet that is self-steering and i have the demonstration footage on my youtube channel and you see an expert sniper hitting him trying to hit a moving car target and then a person who's never fired a sniper's rifle before with a self-steering drone bullet and the bullet literally changes direction in mid-air to hit the target in mid-flight so that's you know that's where we're heading. We're heading. You know, I'm kind of when I see things like that, I'm glad I'm not born now because what will it be like in 20 years' time? But that's the kind of world the transhumanists are bringing us into. There's, you know, the people who say, "Oh, well, that's just to protect us from terrorists." No, our governments are the terrorists, and 
the, 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 the them bullets are for us. They're for anyone. You know what's happening in Baltimore at the moment? They love things like that because the more there's riots in Baltimore, the more they can implement their police state, the more they can crack down and eventually use their self-steering drone bullets. And uh, police are getting thicker, stupider, but they're also getting heavily armed. They get the, the, the more stupid and inhuman the police come, the more weapons they get. Do you ever notice that? The more guns and machine guns and other kind of weapons they get like cops are not as 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 sort of like engaging with the communities they used to be they're definitely not they're not they're not crime solvers anymore what they are is just thugs for the corporate state and as their stupidity and as they lower the standards and and even things like lower the height restrictions and weight weight restrictions to get into the police they're giving them machine guns they're giving them armored cars and they'll eventually give them self-steering drone bullets so it's it's a frightening future in many ways and people will say oh we're all waking up in humanity at the crossroads well you are talking through your brown eye through your chocolate starfish you really really are humanity is not waking up and anyone who's anyone i don't know how anyone anyone who's in this kind of like alternative scene i wonder these speakers can stand on a stage and say a great awakening is about to happen it's not it's not and one of the reasons that people don't go to events like you know don't go to many events anymore or don't you know partake in this scene is because they were waiting for the previous generation of bullshitters to tell them you know a big change is coming we're all waking up and it never happened and they went back to watching tv there is no event coming there is no great awakening coming the aliens are not coming nothing is happening except one thing only your ass can save your own backside nothing and nobody else not you know uh, some chain smoking nicotine encrusted windbag talking to itself in the future on a Ouija board is not going to save your ass you're robbing yourself of your own potential if you're listening to someone like that you're robbing yourself of your own potential if you think aliens are coming you're robbing yourself of your own potential if you think you know the hundred monkey is coming because that's what's happening you're sitting back and you think it's going to happen just by watching YouTube videos and you know going to you know reading books and you know sharing it's not going to happen okay get that into your head only you can save yourself yes the world is run by absolute bastards but like I said a few weeks ago there's no reason for them to take the song from your heart or the color from your eyes no reason at all knowing that is freedom knowing that is liberation because you don't have to waste your time on it anymore you learn skills you learn how to be independent and you enjoy life knowing much more importantly that you and you alone are in charge of your own destiny you know that's the truth of it you are in charge of your own destiny yeah i know it's sometimes you know you hear listen to like people like Alex Jones going, we're living on a prison planet, uh, in, incoming chemtrail bombers, uh, uh, it's coming, uh, martial law, uh, 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 yeah, buy my videos, uh, uh, call, uh, and all this kind of crap. That's all, that's all sensationalism to keep you, you know, buying his videos and all that crap. And it also makes you feel powerless and helpless. It makes you feel powerless and helpless. Yeah! America under siege. Yeah! FEMA camps in the opening. Yeah! They're coming to get you. Oh, God. Anyway. When I record this, I put the sound of a siren in the background. Woo! Woo! Now, but better we have a dog going. Arr, 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 arr. Anyway, speaking of self-autonomy and self-independence, while I was in England, I was in a hotel room, and uh, I did something absolutely filthy. I, I did something really depraved and because I was all you know in the hotel room I could do anything I wanted and in a city full of like a city a city full of like debauchery I went to the max I partook in the ultimate depravity 
I watched BBC News. And then I, I and then and then when I was feeling really dirty and filthy and, and skanky, I switched over to Fox News. Oh, oh, it was, I, I felt like an animal. I felt like an animal. And then when I got, then, 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 then when I went, I said, let's, let's take it to the next level. Let's get really, really feckin' depraved here. I, 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 I had that, I had that thing in my hand. Yeah, and I, and I squeezed real hard on it. And I switched over to Sky News. And I watched what was nothing other on all the British channels, not just those ones. It, when, you don't ha- when you don't have a TV and you don't watch it, and then when you do go back to watch TV, it's like being a visitor to an alien planet. It really, really is. It's like being a visitor to an alien planet. And what all these channels were doing were advertising for the political system. That's all. That's all they were doing. They served no other function. Poli- it doesn't matter if they were a commercial channel or the BBC, a public channel. It didn't matter if they were a British channel, an American channel, a Russian channel, a Iranian channel. You name it, it did not matter. The entire function of the media was to be an enabler for the democratic, psychopathic political system that's what it, that's what it was all about what i saw was stories that were literally editorials on behalf of politicians in the guise of news everything and the whole purpose of the these these reports was to make you believe that nobody see britain is having an, a general election soon to make you believe that you cannot exist or do anything in your life without a politician endorsing it. Literally, that's what it was like. You you cannot wipe your own backside without having a politician do it for you. They have so successfully gaslighted the population that they believe that they cannot do anything without some kind of political help. I'll give you an example. You know, they had these kind of vox pop things on the BBC. Uh, with the, in between all the, the, the condescending, patronizing smiles and you know commentary on the show, they had all this this nonsense. And they go, you know, they they had they, they, some tart, some some whore sitting there with her, you know, her her peroxide haircut and her, you know, her cocksucker lips. Ooh. AMF, say that. And she's going, well, with the election coming up, what are we going to do? How does the government stand on the arts? You know, how does how does the government stand on I can do it? Do you hear my BBC accent? Ha- Hello. I'm I'm Chester from the BBC. I went to Cambridge Christ College. Yes. Yes. I now work for the BBC. I have this voice, this particular BBC voice, because I had the chairman of the Conservatives Party penis in my mouth when I was 10. And that's why I talk like this. Yes. Anyway, I'm not going to be on the air for much longer, you can tell, can't you? Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so she goes, with the election coming up, we now have to go and see how it is the government... Or any, whatever party is going to be in government. Like we have a feckin' choice. Or you have a feckin' choice. Whatever party is going to be in government is, we'll do for the arts. We'll do for the arts. And then the camera goes to a guy who's a George Formby impersonator dressed in a World War II outfit. Oh, Mrs. Browning, at the town and then the cleaning windows. That, that kind of thing, right? Whatever. I kind, I kind of like some of George Formby's, George Formby's music. He was actually a, a, a genius in his own way. But a George Formby impersonator is hardly representative of the arts. And so your man, they're asking this guy, who's definitely been, you know, recruited from the local Conservative Party or the local Labour Party or Lib Dem, whatever, to be on t- on the telly. And he goes, you know, ah, if we don't have the arts, you know, we lose everything. And I do hope this government does everything to keep the arts alive. Now think about that. 
this this I'm struggling here to maintain decorum this gentleman this gentleman says that we need the government to keep the arts alive right so this is now gaslight this is this is you being gaslighted right like you cannot pick up a pencil and a piece of paper and do a sketch unless you have government support you understand they control the arts now they control all creativity your life is completely dependent upon the government endorsing your creativity and this is how they are about everything you can't do nothing without them because this is how democratology works liar or bullshitter a or liar or bullshitter b in the two-party tweedledum tweedledee system has to justify his own existence by making you believe or her existence by making you believe that you cannot survive in any aspect of your life from making an omelette to creating a symphony or shaving under your arms or watching a flower grow or watching two cows no watching a bull and a cow riding in a field and laughing at the size of the bull's langer you cannot do you the the the, the joy of young boys finding white dog shite all them things that are worth living for cannot happen unless the government makes it happen and you see when you don't have a TV and you do what I did in that hotel room you realize just how gaslighted and mind controlled the world is to believe nothing can be done without a politician's or a government's endorsement what the government going to do for me? What, uh, uh, what's the government going to do to me? Well, if that's how you think, if that's how you live your life, uh, I need the government to do this. I need the government to do that. Uh, uh, the government, oh, will I vote for you? Hello, I'm here looking for your vote. I'm, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the patronizing gobshites party. And we're running for election in your constituency. Yeah, hold on a second. <coughs> I just had to clear out some of Boris Johnson then. <coughs> now, we're running for election in your constituency. And we care passionately about your policies. What are you interested in? We don't mind. I like to. I like to sit on the toilet and I, 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 I like to pick my nose and I pick my. And when I get a really big fucking bogey and I pull it out, I like to roll it and then flick it. What is the government going to do for me to make that easier? Well, we 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 have just so happens we have a bogey flicking initiative and if you vote for us the condescending bollocks party the condescending barking bollocks party we will we will we will implement a program whereby you can roll the biggest bogey and flick it and not only that and not only that we will pay for someone to come round your house and help you do it yeah, I'm gonna vote for you. I'm gonna vote for you. And that's how it works. That's how it works. That's why democracy is the greatest system ever, ever invented for psychopaths. Ever. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. And uh, vote for me. And I'll deliver it. And, well, I'll, I'll say I'll deliver it. I'll <coughs> 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 Oh. Oh. oh, that was a rough night in the House of Commons last night. Yes, vote for me. Vote for me and uh, I, will, I will deliver these policies. And when I get into government, when I get into government, I will, I will ignore them. Yes.
I will do everything in my power to pretend and act like I never made those promises, like I never told you I would do these things for you. And then you, you the electorate, you the mindless knobheads, will complain. And they never did this for me. They never, they never delivered on the promises. I never vote for those bastards again. Oh, but you will. You will vote again. You'll come back every four years, like like an addict. You will. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter if I talk like this, or any other accent in any other country in any other language, where democracy holds sway. You will come back every four years. Every four years, and you will complain. You will say the same things. You will say, "I, I won't vote for any of these toss bags because they're all liars. They're all liars." But you know what? You will vote because you're a stupid bastard, and you think this is normal. No matter what country you live in, we have you well trained. You have you well trained. I was looking at a.、Uh, And they, and they they play on your mind now. Here in Ireland, this is what they do to us: is they go, Ah, sure, no, you have to vote. You know, you have to vote because, eh,、uh, you know, uh, oh, you know, my name is Larry. Larry, when when I get elected to be Prime Taoiseach, Taoiseach, the Prime Minister here, you'll still call me Larry, even though I'm a, even though I'm a, a career criminal psychopath. Jesus, I'm a career criminal psychopath. I I. I'll rob you, feckin' blind. I'll I'll bankrupt the country, but you'll still call me Larry. You'll still ah Jesus, we love Larry. Larry's a great man, you know. He's he's about as ethical. He's about as ethical as 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 Jack the Ripper. But you'll still call me Larry. You'll still call me Larry, 'cause you're so feckin' well trained. And when you and when I rob you of your bleeding rights, and I rob you of all your feckin' rights, right? You be walking down the street. Carrying a marching gun with a big sign saying "Larry out, Larry out," not "prick out," not "shithead out," not "knobhead out," but "Larry out." Because you think because I tell you to call me, but I get all my marketing and spin people to make you through my through my bitches and whores in the media. I get you to call me by my first bleeding name, and you know what? That makes you think that you and me are mates. When I would actually drive a fucking tank over, a f- oh jeez, of course, forgive me. I, for- I thought I was Brian Town in the doll back. When I, when I, when I, I drive a bleeding tank over you and sell your children into slavery, you'd still be calling me Larry, won't you? You'd still be calling me fucking Larry. And in America. They'll be voting for Hillary. I'm voting for Hillary Clinton because she's a lady. She's a woman. She has a vagina, and we need, we badly need a vagina in the White House. Yes, we we got a we got a black man in the White House, and when we need a vagina in the White House, and the next time after that, we will have a Chinese transsexual alien in the White House, and then we will have. Diversity and equal. We so we have to have a vagina. I don't care if she if she squirted on Diane Sawyer after hearing about Muammar Gaddafi having being anally raped with a bayonet before having his throat cut. I don't care. She's a woman and she represents diversity. Diversity is everything. And the beat goes on, and the beat, and every four years you fall for this shite. Every four years, and then you and the tough woman, y'all, y'all say、uh, it's a two-party system. It's all rigged. They're all the same until Russell Brand came along. Oh Jesus Christ! When Russell came along, that changed everything. On gossamer wings, he floated into the newsnight studio, and you sat there with the with the drool coming out of side your mouth as he said words like socialism and and bankers and and, and elite, and and you drool Russ 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 he's he's going to save us. And then when I came out the next day and said he's full of shit. 
He's full of shit. I just looked into him. I thought a few weeks ago he maybe the man was having a sincere political up awakening, but I looked into it. He's so stitched up with the bankers you would not believe it. And secondly, all he's doing is spouting new Labour policy. Uh, don't be sure then. He, 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 he's jealous of Russ because Russ has a big knob and, and he's got a big willy and, and he's famous. And uh, I'm not going to obey, obey, obey. I don't want to vote for him because uh, he, he's saying something new. Yeah, yeah, he's saying something new like we, uh, Labour Party policy from the 1970s. That's what he's saying now. But you didn't listen. You didn't listen. Uh, 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 and so, oh, I hate to be a tossback. I hate to be a twat about it. I hate, I hate to be a twat about it. But if I was a smug, self-satisfied knobhead, which I'm not, because I couldn't give a shit what you said about me, of course, again, FCC. Here, have a pubic hair. FCC, that's how much I care about you. Ed Millibrand spotted leaving Russell Brand's London home. I said it, that all Russell Brand was, all he represents was to take the people, I, can't, I have his photo, I have his photograph up here now, there's two eyes. <sighs> I'm mesmerized by Russell's eyes, oh, even though he looks like a junkie. Anyway, I have to, I have to move his, his picture out the screen. It's driving making me sick. Anyway, yeah, speculation that the comedian had previously urged his fans not to vote may be considering endorsing Labour leader in the UK general election, exactly as I called it. I didn't use a crystal ball. I didn't hear demons in a hotel room telling me to believe this. I simply listened to what he was saying. Who he was going to do, and I said, "Ah, he's a Fabian socialist, and that's all this is to take the people who are waking up and to steer them back into the left-wing parties in the UK." Now it actually panned out even faster than I expected because I thought they were going to create this purple pill party, which would be kind of a new lefty party. But that, that's probably too much work. The, the, the psychopaths in charge, that's still too much work for them. So so they got our Russ to follow the Pied Piper. Russ is our man, Russ is our man. Let's follow Russell. We are awake. We're not gullible. Ooh, let's follow Russell. Right into the Labour Party. That's what's happened. That's what's happened. It's happened for two reasons. The first one is, you're a douchebag. The second reason is they've been working on you for thousands of years to make you a douchebag. But only people who have never been tried to wake up or been switched on, switched on, switched on can use the douchebag opt-out clause. The rest of you who spent years watching Vigilance Sitler Citizen saying, oh, celebrities are all, they can't trust them, oh, Hollywood Babylon, oh, Brian of Russell Brand, oh. I, 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 I've just, you have no excuse. You, let, just admit that you're an idiot. I, I'll respect you and love you if you admit you're an idiot. That's okay. Admitting you were wrong is how you learn things. Admitting you were wrong is how you made mistakes, but what you did was any chance there would have been as remote and minute as it would have been of a great awakening all you people who claim to be switched on woken up awake whatever you destroyed it when you ran after russell brand because you gave away everything that had been worked for for that point and you gave it back to the labor party in the uk and even when it was, even when he was in the New Statesman, you refused to believe it. Even when it was pointed out that his girlfriend was Jemina Khan of the massive Goldsmith banking dynasty, who are like literally they're 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 they're, they're just as bad as the Rothschilds. In fact, they're obsessed with interbreeding in them. You still didn't believe me when I went on to Red Ice and gave that two-hour interview breaking down everything the history of Fabian socialism how it works how what he's saying is everything you've heard about it there's nothing new here you still didn't believe me and you know what I bet after this story came out in the Guardian and the Telegraph and all the newspapers that Russell Brand is is is, is buddying up with the Labour, Labour Party leader Ed, Mr. Millibrand you still won't believe it because maybe you're not meant to believe it 
maybe maybe you're not good enough to be woken up. Do you ever think about that? That's that sense of smugness when you had calling other people sheep. That sense of smugness when you when you listen to a uh, when you listen to Alex Jones going in, in, incoming contrail bombers coming in GMO drugs a population that's asleep. Ah, yes, get your gold, buy gold. Maybe you could eat it when money runs out. <coughs> that, that that was me coughing. That was that was a. Uh, that was the FEMA execution squads taking you to the FEMA camps. Yeah, yeah. you're woken up. You're not a sheep. Sheep no more. Sheep. You, 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 you stirred. You stirred in Wendley. And you, and when David Ike says, "Let's do a non-comply dance," you all complied by dancing. When if you were really awake, you wouldn't have left your seat. But but you're not a sheep, so you had that smug feeling when you left Wembley or when you stopped listening to Infowars that you were not a sheep and you walked down the street feeling, I'm not a sheep, I'm not a sheep. Incoming chemtrail bombers, FEMA camps, NWO, Bigo, you were not a sheep, you were not a sheep. Warning, warning, New World Order attacking, you were not a sheep. And then... You went out and you supported a no-talent comedian, a no-talent actor who was clearly a bullshitter, and you destroyed the Awakened movement in one go. You killed it. You murdered it. You killed it. And that's why it went into a spiraling state of psychosis, where we have Muppets believing in the flat earth because... There's nowhere else for them to go, so they might as well go completely crazy. That's why they got into neo-Nazism, because they there's nothing else that's falling apart. You blew it. Russell Brand's brief was to scoop up everybody who was waking up in the UK, steer them back, st- f- spin them around on a wild goose chase for a little bit, Give them hope. Put that celebrity sparkle in their eyes. Woo, woo, woo. Celebrity sparkle eye drops. Woo. Gives you the, the sparkle in your eyes. Woo. Makes you look like a mindless cult member. And you follow. And and and, and when I said, no, he's it's 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 just trying to steer you back into labour. It's just starting to steer you back one way or another. Going back into labour. <coughs> you go. Uh, Tommy Shane's jealous. Oh, he's jealous of our rush. Dennis of Aaron Ruth goes, oh, he's got a big knob. He's got a big knob and he's got a lot of women on the end of his knob. And uh, that's why Thomas Sheridan is jealous. Also, he's got money. And as a socialist, I fully support a Russell Brand over Thomas Sheridan because he's a millionaire. Because I, I believe that all the, all the millionaires and the elites, they need to be taken down. And that's why I support multi-millionaire Russell Brand over Thomas Sheridan. And then, woo, stood you back in. The damage was done. His brief was to demolish. That's why he buddied up. That's why you had Alex Jones and David Icke kissing his backside at the same time I was saying, don't listen to this guy. It's, it's, it's all a big setup. <clears throat> Completely and utter, utterly led you into a Fabian cul-de-sac and like misty-eyed sheep while you were calling everybody else sheep, you ran right into it. But that's okay. Admit you were wrong. Okay, so now that we have found out that you are wrong, now that we have found out that democracy doesn't work, all you people in Ireland who are thinking that if you vote for another party, you're going to abolish the water charge. <laughs> dream on, dreamer, find another dream. <laughs> all you people in America who goes, I'm voting for Hillary Clinton because she has a clitoris out of vagina. Well, allegedly a clitoris. All you people out there, keep on doing it. Just like when you vote for change. And in fact, I was watching the trues with Russell Brand and Millibrand, and they kept saying that magical word, change, change. Change is a word that means nothing. It's a word that has no definite Meaning, change could be murdering you all. We don't want po- you don't, you, when you vote for a politician or when you follow 
Russell Brand like the, the servile moron 2.0 sheep that you are, going, we got to have change. Look, change, if, if you're having a problem in your life, say, look, say, say you don't have any money, right? And you got to borrow some money off your friend. Or, you know, you're, you're dying and you need a doctor. Do you go to the doctor and say, uh, the doctor goes to you, what's wrong with you? And you go, I need change. You go, no, no, no. I've got a pain in my chest. I can't breathe. I have a pain in my leg. <clears throat> there's, there's, when I go to the toilet, there's a jet of flame shooting down my willy. Because I went to a prostitute last week. You don't go into the doctor and you say, I have I need change. You go in with specific symptoms so he can make specific changes to keep your ass alive. Politicians and Russell Brand offering change is not the same thing as offering solutions. Specific solutions tailored to specific requirements, necessities, needs of the citizens. Change means dick. Nothing. Nada. Zero. It means nothing. So don't stop, you, stop saying, we need change. Change happens naturally by itself. What you need is a specific solution. Politicians will never deliver it. Because that's not their job. The purpose of a government in a democracy, apart from two, has two purposes. One, the self-perpetuation of the government institutions itself, which includes bureaucrats, the civil service, the public sector, and the mass media. Secondly, to grease the wheels of corporatism to keep corporations ticking along nicely so you, the tax animals on the giant corporate farm, do not cause any problems for who really is your real masters, the CEOs of corporations. That's what and when they say it change, it's change for the citizens, meaning nothing but specific measures for big business. Do you ever notice that? Especially in America, all the politicians when they're making speeches about 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 the social issues, about protect you know, about the society, it's all we we will deliver hope. We will deliver change. If you vote for me, America, I will bring you change. A thousand points of light. It takes a village. The audacity of hope. One more, one more rub, one more rub, and we'll be there. It's never. I will deliver specific policies. Here's how much we're at. No, it's never that. But when it comes to the corporations oh my god they have those things worked out to the penny what they can do for the corporations so it's specific measures to make life easy and business smoother and lesser taxes for the big corporations but the rest of us get change hope audacity a thousand points of light and spiritual spiritual socialism it's been true without you mean it's always been without you that's what we get. We don't need change. We need specific measures. We don't get specific measures of politicians. We get change. Change and hope. And big ideas. And new labours. Deliver nothing to you. So get over that. Stop telling yourself. We need a change in the political system. We need a third party. All any third party or any third candidate is going to be is a temporary stopgap that will pick up people who have somehow been cognitively aware enough to figure out that it's a two-party system that means nothing and to keep them in a holding pattern until they until he tor he or she running the, or that third party option exposes itself as a load of crap that means nothing or Waits for them to die. It'll always be a two-party system. Because that's what democracy has always been. And those people who say we need more than a two-party system. It's like saying we need three heirs on Mickey Mouse. It's always been a two-party system. In dem every democracy. Particularly in a republic. It's never going to change. So now that I've told you this. And you should have figured it out by yourself. 
what happens next? Well, that's the whole point. I'm not, I can't tell you how to live your life. Only you can do that. So, in Ireland, there's people saying, well, you know, if, if we get the government to change the policy on Irish water or abolish Irish water, we will be free of all those taxes and everything. Oh, no, you won't. What you need to start doing is to start collecting your own water. Simple. Start collecting your own water and stop wasting water. Take responsibility for your own life. Instead of waiting for governments to do things for you, do as much as you can for yourself by yourself. It's really that simple. When a politician comes to your door, don't answer it. Don't answer it. When he, when he tries to be nice to you, just ignore him. Just walk past him. You don't need him. He's an irrelevant, an irrelevant phenomena. It doesn't matter what he says or does. None of those things will come to pass. Sometimes, occasionally, you might get a token gesture delivered. But it means nothing. All these people in America going on about Obamacare. Let me tell you something about Obamacare doesn't exist doesn't exist it's a talking point to keep bureaucrats and the media in business doesn't exist look after your own health care policy try and get insurance do something look after yourself lose weight exercise do what it takes don't be depending on the government that's not to say there are good, there aren't good people who work in government agencies all over the world there are but they'll never be in positions of power. And they'll, also, they'll always be treated like dirt by the politicians. That will, that will never change. As much as you can be independent, be independent. As much as you can. Because if you're going to vote for this party, that party, or the other party, I can guarantee you nothing will be done. And in four years' time, you say, why do I waste my time dealing with these gobshites? They never deliver. You know what it's like? Voting, I said this a few times before, vo all voting in a democracy is, is an interactive circus or interactive performance, a, a stage play, a pantomime, if you will, where every four years we get to clap the loudest on who the best actor is. Who played Cinderella best? That's all it is. And that Cinderella gets to get the, the star on the dressing room. But meanwhile, all of them on the stage are all involved as insiders, and you're still in the audience. That's what an election is. But going back, and, and, and after you discovered this out, and going back four years later and doing it the same thing again, you're like, a, you're like a person who's in an abusive relationship. A person who's being beaten by their spouse, who thinks, if, if we have a baby, he'll stop beating me. If if I get another job and do as she says, she'll stop verbally abusing me. But it never changes because all that individual in that abusive relationship learns, understands, is that you're learning to be more and more compliant with the abuse. And this story that everyone has a limit, i got news for you. Most people don't, don't have a limit when it comes to being abused. There's lots of people who spend... 30, 40 years in an abusive relationship beaten all the time and they stayed right to the end. And that's what happens if you maintain your participation and compliance in the democratic process. You are like an abused spouse. An abused partner. You're not running away. You're staying there saying, ah, deep down inside, he's really a good person. And he doesn't mean to do this to me. Or deep down inside, she's really a nice woman. She doesn't really mean it when she calls me a useless maggot and demeans me and makes me feel inadequate and lies to me constantly. That's what that is. That's what democracy is. An abusive relationship and we are the targets. And how do you get out of an abusive relationship? No contact ever again. There is nothing for you 
in the democratic system there's nothing for me in the democratic system and there's nothing for us the last time I voted was the first Lisbon Treaty vote in Ireland when the overwhelming majority of the Irish people voted against the EU's Lisbon Treaty and the reaction to it by both the Irish government, the Irish mainstream media, the Irish political bureaucracy and the EU was ah well we respect your frustrations but lads go back and vote again and this time for democracy get the result that we want and I haven't voted since and there's no I don't I don't know how any other Irish people any other Irish person could vote since that we were we were told to go back and to change our vote for greater democracy but they weren't lying to us because they were telling us what exactly what democracy is a scam that they'll only keep going as long as the citizens are compliant gullible and stupid enough to keep the elite in power and if we stop doing that there's two things would happen either one would collapse into a state of anarchy good thing two they would unleash absolute and total brutal fascism upon us but at least then we'd know what we were de really dealing with the clown with the smile the clown mask with the smile on its face would be ripped off and the shark predator monster with the the, the 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 vicious teeth below would finally be revealed at least then politicians for the first time in history would actually show their true colors of what they really are the mask would be gone that's what we're voting for now except now they're wearing a mask so I'm not going to tell you how to live your life you people in England you can go out and vote for your Green Party we have the Green Party here in Ireland remember the Green Party are pan national part pan nationalist party basically running the same policies everywhere they were eight years in government and they were an absolute catastrophe and they were just like they were worse in some ways than all the regular parties so you vote for them thinking it's going to be great oh you vote for whatever whatever a uh, planned third party this version this year's Ron Paul they bring to you in America with the last minute you vote for that you, you go ahead say things like well our ancestors die well I'll go back uh, Alex Jones our ancestors died 1776 was the answer to uh, 1984 our ancestors they fought for the democratic system of America you gotta get out and vote you gotta get out and vote they, they sacrificed was not for nothing but by gold eh? their sacrifice was for nothing my ancestors fought in the Irish War of Independence for nothing for nothing waste of time complete waste of time waste of life Irish military lives British military complete waste of time all for nothing bankers won in the end like the bankers always do whenever democracy is involved what's the answer there is no answer there's only you can only take care of your own life I haven't got the answers I'm not intelligent enough I'm not smart enough I'm not clever enough I just know like in the outlaw Josie Wales when he said that line don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining because that's what democracy is it's pissing down your back and telling you it's raining and they're all liars because they're supposed to be liars Russell Brand is a liar if you still think he's, you think, if you still think after his meeting with, with, with Miller Brand, even if he gets, he meets Cameron next week, that'll all be part of a stage thing. See that? That's all part of the black magic to keep you involved in the political system. Don't turn your back. Don't, don't stop voting. And he said, "Don't vote." And now here he is courting politicians. It would be like someone who's, uh, someone who claims to be fighting pedophiles, meeting with a, uh, meeting with a uh, Jimmy Savile after you know in he in hell, and saying, "Great job, Jimmy." That's what Russell Brand has done, meeting Mill Brand, Cameron, whatever he does. Showed his true colours, he's a fake, he's a phony, he's a fraud. Just like I said, if you, if you believed it, fell for it, you're a fool, you're an idiot. Especially if you think you're awake. Uh, but you learn from your mistakes, don't fall for it, don't let it happen again. Start looking over after your own backside, your own ass, and taking care of yourself in your own world. And that's it.
But if you want to vote, by all means do. Enter into that, you know, that magic ritual of going in there and pulling the lever like it's a Las Vegas slot machine, which they can rig really easily. Or going behind the curtain, going behind the curtain, just like an Alice in Wonderland, and getting that pen or that mar- and that marker, that black crayon, and ticking off your. Par- if you're in a proportional. Uh, the proportional representation system casting about one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes or no? You keep doing that. You enter because that's what the magician needs. The magician needs your compliance in order to enact change. This is Thomas Sheridan. It's Valpurgis Night in a couple of minutes. This is the Velocity of Now, the most unusual, possibly the most obnoxious radio show on radio. With the man was more FCC warnings than probably even Howard Stern at this point and doesn't care because I don't live in America so there's nothing you can do about it good night take care of yourself and second if they can't take a joke <laughs>